The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up in a special moment with James and Betty, Jack Hibbs shares his concern for today's culture. For of about 40 years, I have not known uh, what this meant. I had, I had a dream. I've not known the meaning of that until you said something today. You don't even know, you don't even remember what you said about God using us as vessels to bring water to the desert. You know, California has a lot of challenges, let's face it. Okay, they made some mistakes. But they have presented us some of the greatest preachers that ever lived, like Jack Hayford. I watched Jack Hayford introduce all of my Baptist friends and my Bible Baptist friends and all the people who question Pentecostals or whatever. I let him come and inspire every leader I knew. And say, now there's a man who talks about the Holy Spirit is full of the Holy Spirit. And I have watched people come together and become family who would never get in the same room together. This room has been filled with the greatest church leaders in America. We've had people in one setting with us who touch 50 million people a week, either through radio or television, every week. And they were from all different backgrounds and they came together like a family. Well, this gentleman right here, in my opinion, has been gifted by God, chosen by God, anointed by God to help lead the family to look like the Father and to come together in the supernatural unity that Jesus prayed for. And you talk about gifted to communicate. Well, Jack Hibbs has written a book that's just come out called Living in the Days of Deception. It's almost the bondage of deception. I mean, it's, it's like they've been hypnotized by the devil, captured by him. But the devil has exposed himself, his ugliness, his destructiveness, and the total catastrophic consequences of casting aside God's principles and changing his truth into a lie. You cannot think mm -hmm. straight. Had they proved to you, those who are running and ruining our country, they can't think straight. They can't even carry on a sane conversation. Well, Jack Hibbs, I don't know anyone that I think is preaching the truth, the transforming powerful truth any more clearly than Jack is. And that's what's in this book. How did you come up with the thought, the days of deception? It's actually very simple. If you notice the title is living in the D-A-Z-E yeah. of deception. That uh, sermon, it was a sermon series that right after COVID hit, we do have a governor in California that was saying, uh, we've got to shut down churches. But one thing for sure, the strip clubs and marijuana dispensaries, they can stay open and <laughs> so can the bars, but churches have got to stay shut. James and Betty, I knew immediately that that's something that would not be honorable or pleasing to God. And so I do believe in Romans 13. We should obey the governing authorities, but it says in Romans 13 that they've been appointed by God to do good. When Gavin Newsom ceased doing good, uh, then it was time for me and a few others to say, uh, it's better for us to obey God rather than men. So I, I sent the governor a video announcing what we we're going to do with all due respect. Uh, and so I did a sermon, a sermon series titled Living in the Days of Deception. And uh, people got a lot out of it. And the beautiful people at Harvest House Publishing up in Oregon, they had watched it and they had made the comment to me, they, they asked me, would you be willing to write a book on this topic? And I said, no, I'm, I'm not an author. I'm not, I don't want to take the time for that. Uh, they said, well, then can we buy the title from you? Because the title sells days. People are living in a daze. And uh, so I said, you really think so? And so we took the title, we took the sermon, and then we revisited it and added, a, added to it. And so it well, came you, out you took a lot of the truths that you were just oh, the, totally flowing like a river that we and you worked them in to where you were downloading truth that he could see mm. changing and transforming people. Do you not think we could have an awakening and a great turning back to God, which is freedom's only hope? I believe it with this prerequisite. 
every revival biblically and historically has something that preempts the revival, and that is an actual repentant heart. If the church would be repentant of her sins, if pastors would preach the word and teach the word again, stop worrying about numbers, stop worrying about fame or fortune, but to preach the pure word of God, that power of the word going out is going to change the heart, and it begins with repentance. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. I believe that revival is imminent mm -hmm. if we repent of our sins. And it's going to start in the pulpit. It's got to start in the pulpit if I understand the Bible correctly. Do you see that start? I, people are going to be shocked to hear this, but I'm watching it happen in California. There are pastors in California that are systematically coming to that understanding. And I, I tell my friends, especially in DC, keep your eyes on California. Pastors are waking up and they're engaging the culture. They're standing for pro-life. They're encouraging their churches to get involved to fight back against these wicked bills and these wicked laws by doing really what Paul told the Corinthians to do in 2 Corinthians 10, 6. By being obedient to Christ, we will punish all disobedience when our obedience is Fulfilled. In other words, follow Jesus and we will be salt and light where, wherever we're at. We are to be engaged in the culture. We are to finish the fight. The fruit of the spirit is to emanate from us. We should speak the truth in love. But I think we've hidden behind this politeness to the point where we've almost uh, have done so to a self self-inflicting well, way. we separated ourselves yes. from, from what God wants us to do as his children. Yes. I mean, we're in the world, it says, but not of the exactly. world. Well, we've taken, given it the, that phrase the wrong definition. Yeah. We have somehow thought, I, I'm going to pull back from this dirty world mm -hmm. and keep myself clean. The way I understand the scripture is that it is the cleansing power of the blood of Christ that galvanizes you as you go into that dirty mm -hmm. world. But far too many Christians and even pulpits, I think, today are afraid of engaging the culture. And we know this is true because they'll say, well, we don't talk about abortion. That's a, that's a, that's a political thing. It's not a political thing. That's part of the days of deception. Notice the enemy rushes in and takes a biblical issue and declares it to be secular and then tells you and I to be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. And we have fallen far too long for that. And so now is the hour. Uh, for pastors and for Christians to actually realize that if we're going to follow Jesus, he was the most loved and the most hated, yeah. but he was hated for being truthful. We are to be the most loved. You talked about us being like the family. Do we really want to be like that family? His family. His family. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. But know this, if you are going to be as loving as Jesus, then evil is going to hate you as they hated Jesus. Especially if you affect evil's plotting plans. Yes their self-centered, self-serving ways. And, and, the, and we will. And one of the biggest uh, deceptions of the devil is uh, passing this message through believers and churches. Stay out of politics, it's dirty. Mm. Well, it's only dirty if dirty people stay in it and run it and the clean <laughs> people stay out. I mean, that's nonsense. I mean, if we're going to be a light in the world, you don't hide the light. There's no place that light needs to prevail more greatly than in the leadership and the powers that control and the policies and principles and practices that are put in place and forced on and even passed into law. And our laws today are defying, denying, and destroying the law of God yeah. and the very life of God. I mean, we've destroyed marriage. We have literally redefined sex. We now don't know what you are, even though the world can see what yeah, you are. If right. they'll just take a look, it doesn't right. take long to find That's out right. if you're That's a boy right. or a girl. Real quick. And now then we're competing against one another. And if you don't like that, you can go to jail for believing truth and believing what the Word of God says yeah. and what our founders say and our constitution says. I need to calm down. <laughs> if, if you don't believe the truth and you are deceived, then you are destroying the fruit of truth mm. and the beauty and magnificence of God's rule and reign in the life of any field, any yielded person, mm. any person that will let his life and love flow freely through you. It transforms everything because love never fails. Mm -hmm. We just need to turn it loose. And you make me want to turn it loose. I mean, if you're looking for a church, get enough gas. Whatever you got to do, go visit him. Go in person, go online. You can hear what God's putting in his heart. 
And I want you to read his book, I beg you to. And I want you to go online and listen to him because he's preaching nonstop. I'm amazed, God, I'm amazed at what you've done in Jack. It's gonna be beautiful to watch because this river is just beginning to flow. Mm. And I pray that it will flow so freely that it will put water on every thirsty desert, every dry plant, every dry person, every dry, deceived, defeated heart and life, and they will spring up bearing much fruit. Yes. That's my prayer for you, yes. my prayer for the nation, my prayer for the church. We're gonna to talk mm -hmm. tomorrow. I want you to get real specific about some things we need to focus on. Betty says that we must vote in every election. She finds elections I did not know were going on. Yeah. I mean, like people neglecting the school board and yep. you realize we gave the school to the, de to the deceiver? Yes. We gave the entire public school system yes. to the deceiver, yeah. but parents can take it back. Absolutely. And Betty knows that. This, this woman, she shows me things that are going on that I didn't even know there was an election on. And you wanna know why? because she thinks what God's people think and care about matters. Yes. And so we always know, mm -hmm. and we want you to vote. She said she didn't vote first time until she was 30. I find myself wondering if maybe that was pretty close to when Reagan ran. We sure had to have votes for, we had to turn everything back mm -hmm. when God gave us him. Uh, Jack, we want everybody to get your book. You Thank you. Go online and get it. Let me say this. If you will help us set some trafficked girls free, mm. some children, if you will help us do that, and we have been doing it for years effectively, you perhaps built some of the biggest homes in the world for the trafficked. And we're helping Tim Tebow help the traffic situation here. We try to help everybody. And Jack, what we're doing is we are finding these kids before the sex traffickers buy them from their impoverished, impoverished area. We're setting them free from where they're trafficked. And then we're beginning to train them and teach them and actually give them not only an education, but how to, how to have a job. We're gonna send not only the book that we've just written, which has been planned for everybody's opportunity right now uh, during this time frame, but we're gonna give them your book too, you. if they'd like to have it. Would you just watch the need for being set free? And we have some friends that have given $320,000 to match whatever you give. If I give that much, they match it? Yeah, they will. We may have to talk to some others about matching some of the smaller gifts. But my point is, people care about this. Yeah. So we're asking you $128 for Rescue One, now too, because it'll be matched. I want, I want you to look in and see the situation with the girls and the children that need our help. Watch. <laughs> It makes our hearts joyful to see children across this world being able to just be children. But the stark truth is, millions of children right now are having their childhood ripped away as they're forced into the dark world of human trafficking. Mena was only 12 years old when a relative did the unimaginable and sold her to sex traffickers. Her life was forever changed I cried, telling them I do not want to be in this big city. And I do not want to do this kind of work. They would hit me so much that I would bleed from my nose and mouth. And they would hit me in my chest until I would cough up blood. This is why Rescue Life is so critical by reaching into villages around the world with education and intervention. The effort to save lives from this torment is what Rescue Life is all about, but it can only happen with your help in order to reach, rescue, and restore these precious lives. Because of the help that Mena received, she devotes much of her time reaching out to young women so they can escape the experience and the trauma she did. I thank God every day for keeping me alive.
You know, Betty, when, when we went into the trafficked areas, it, it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was frightening. And we went. And we didn't know if anybody watching would help because they didn't like to see girls that were not mm -hmm. dressed properly. It was obvious they were being sex objects. But not only did you help, you refused to stop. And it's the first time our donors put together a huge matching gift, just themselves. And they won't stop. It's every year. And uh, what do you feel in your heart when you saw the, the need and then you've seen what our viewers have built with loving homes and people who love them to get God's arms around them. What do you want our viewers to feel and understand that you've seen? And well, I've been so blessed to see what you have done joining with Life Outreach to make the difference, to save these little ones. We have beautiful, James and I have beautiful great-granddaughters. I can't imagine someone taking one of them and treating them and using them like these little ones get used. Please continue to join with us if it's your first time you will thoroughly be blessed by just reaching out and let's be a family to reach out and save the lives of these children. They deserve that chance. They deserve to know that someone's caring about them, loving them, and want to help them get out of these situations. When you and I saw these little impoverished girls bought for just cheap money and promised a great job in the future, and they were immediately trafficked into sex, gotten on drugs, mm -hmm. held captive. You saw the horror of it, yeah. and then you saw what love did when missionaries would sell everything and move over there, take their own children, right into difficulty, yes. start renting houses, and we told them, we'll rent the houses for you, what you're doing with your lives, and then we'll start building houses that become unbelievable transformation centers, and we've worked now in 70 countries. We've built outreaches in many countries that are permanent places. When you see the change, what does your heart say about what the love these people have expressed is doing? What goes on inside when you see the impact it makes? Wow, it blesses me so much because I know the importance. I, I feel that in my heart, the importance when our little, our little grandchildren come to see us, the joy that I feel coming from them, the expression of love. And I know what it does to my heart to know these children are going to a safe place. There's so much to be said about a safe place for children where they can play and run about and they can teach them who, who loves them and who, who God is, who Jesus is, and they can be the children that God created them to be. What a blessing. You're part of that. We want you to continue to be. Well, you know, the missionaries are a part, but you're the major part because you make it happen. That's right. Uh, you know, Paul asked, how shall they preach if they're not sent? The bottom line of getting the gospel out is the sender. Don't you ever forget that. And you may not be seen, but you're the bottom line. And of doing this transformative work of giving these little children freedom, mm -hmm. you're it. You're the source, you're the supply, you're the flow of God's love and compassion. Would you right now plan to go get your bank card or get a check, and you're going to make the check to life, but you're going to take that bank card and go online or dial that number that people call every day for prayer? And you take that card and you make the biggest gift you can, knowing this, it takes $128 to rescue a child for that year. But now it's going to be matched by the $320,000 matching gift. That means it'll rescue not uh, one, but two, 128. And I always ask our viewers, stretch it. Could you give to rescue 10 and give 1,280. Now it won't be 10, it'll be 20. Father, help people to see the beauty of this love. In Jesus' name, please, we have some gifts to send you. I'm gonna send you a book, Fight the Good Fight, that I promise you if we put it in play, and it's not gonna be hard to do, it will save the future of freedom. It will turn this country, and it will start this year, and it must, and it will be miraculous. Let me send it to you. It's a gift of love. Would you make a gift of love to give these children a chance at freedom? Jesus gave his life that that truth could make us free when it's born in us and pours through us. 
It shares freedom everywhere. Please, go get your card. Call the number. Go online. Make the gift God put on your heart. We'll send gifts to bless you and help you grow. Thank you so much. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to 64 With your gift today, we'll send you the brand new book from James Robinson and Jay Richards, Fight the Good Fight. This book will open your eyes to what's at stake and the unwavering truth that God isn't finished with our nation. It's time to fight the good fight and return to unshakable biblical principles. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the NIV large print thin line Bible. This easy to carry, easy to read NIV Bible with comfort print allows you to take in more of God's word each time you open your Bible. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children. And you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, a cup of water. Please call, write, or make your gift online. But I'm believing that we're going to have a miracle response, God, let it be, because you will totally set people free. I want to send you fight the good fight. If we don't fight the good fight starting right now, and this is the simple plan to literally take freedom back and drive the enemy of deception out of power and control, and it has to happen, it has to happen this year or we will lose freedom as we have known it, period. And that is not an exaggeration. I'll also send you Jack's book because I believe he's a man sent from God for this moment in his church. Wait, I have to tell you something because there's two things that happened here today that you're not aware of. I'm gonna try to hold it together right now. For about 40 years, I have not known uh, what this meant. I had, I had a dream. I don't dream. I had a dream f about 40 years ago and it was the California desert and there was a cloud on the horizon the size of a man's fist. I saw the cloud coming and beneath it I could see what looked like a locomotive. Mm -hmm. It had no coal. It was a locomotive. It had a giant bronze bucket on the back and the cloud was a head of the train going through the California desert. And right in front of the, think about a train set. As soon as the tree, train reached the end of the track, another piece of track went in, in front of it, only by sections. And it was moving fast. Wow. The cloud was ahead of it and the rain was falling into the bronze bucket. Mm -hmm. The bronze bucket would fill and the track would turn and that water would spill out over the desert and an oasis would bloom. <laughs> I have not, I've not known the meaning of that. I've not known the meaning of that until you said something today. You don't even know, you don't even remember what you said about God using us as vessels to bring water to the desert. Mm. That freaked me out. And my dad was in the Marine Corps and he was being redeployed out of Coronado to Alaska. My mom was pregnant. My dad found out about it and he said, I'll be back in a year. I do not want a third child in this home. My mom was born and raised in Hawaii. She didn't speak English. She was terrified on Coronado. She knew nobody. Mm. On December 24th, Christmas Eve, 1957, my mom put my brother and my sister to bed and she performed an attempt, attempted abortion. And there was something wrong in a neighbor's home and the neighbor came over to get some help, knocked on my mom and dad's door, came in and found my mom bleeding heavily, mm -hmm. taken to the hospital, Sharps Memorial Hospital on Coronado Island. I was born on January 15th. My dad came home. I was three months old. And all my life, my dad did not acknowledge my presence. Oh. 
He just did not acknowledge me. When I heard the gospel and I heard that there was a father who loved me, I freaked out. I ran forward. Mm -hmm. I want you to know something. Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5 has been the thing of my life. I knew you before you ever came forth That's from my mother's too. home. And I'm telling you, no, I was supposed to be aborted, and my mom failed at it. Mm -hmm. And you said what you and said. The doctor refused purpose. for me. God had purpose. <laughs> yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And we are pouring water out on a dry and thirsty land. Yeah. Yes. And God told me not to waste time. Yes. Trying to cast seed on unreceptive soil. Yes. Because there's too much ready to be receptive to good good seed. And he said that I do not pour water out on an unreceptive soil. You don't have time to waste. But there's so much receptive soil it's going to receive, just like you did. Just like the people that came to visit you. <laughs> the stage is set for the greatest awakening in history. If the church will do what those disciples did when they came out of that upper room and they couldn't explain kingdom, they literally expressed kingdom and it changed the world. And by the way, Paul spent two more years mm -hmm. at the end of Acts where they had done nothing but kingdom, still explaining it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me try to make it clear. The father has a dream. Don't wish less than his will being done according to his dream on his earth that you would not wish less on an owner of a sports team or a coach. <laughs> Don't wish less on him. His will will be done on his earth by his church, and that's who he's coming back for. And that can happen faster than anything. And you don't try to measure it by size. It'll be measured by the bigness and the greatness of God in everything that he lives in and expresses him through. That's what God's waiting for. His will to be done on his earth through his family that looks like him. That's right. <laughs> family. Family. Relationship. For I love family. you, brother. I love you. We are family. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Betty. We are family. Thanks for helping us put God's arms around the overlooked. Thanks for helping us pour his love out on a dry, thirsty land. They're ready to receive the truth, delivered in unconditional, redemptive love. Let it fill you. Let it flow through you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Tell me I'll be your refuge Hide under my wings And you can rest Your head And don't you worry Is it dark? Yes. That darkness, I believe God is begging us to step into it and shine the light. Living in the days of deception tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.